Welcome back with Real People, Real Life with yours truly, Mufasa, right here in Wichita, Kansas. You guys say it with me, guys. America. 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 Yeah. All right. So when I say you guys, like, um, we have Chris here today. And say your name again. Kelly. Kelly. Chris and Kelly with me. And we are talking about hemp. Now, what we're not talking about right now is medical marijuana. We're not talking about recreational marijuana. In fact, we're not talking about marijuana. We're talking about hemp, which there's a huge confusion as to the difference between the two. Correct? Yes. Can you clarify for our viewers exactly where the confusion lies? The confusion comes from 80 years of prohibition and propaganda, propaganda against the cannabis plant as a whole from you know what you're gonna what you can smoke your high THC yielding strains of cannabis all the way down to like we were just talking about ruderalis which is that three foot plant that grows in the ditch all along the highways Uh, that's gonna have a little higher THC than hemp is gonna have but still not enough to get you excited and then hemp which is gonna have less than 0.3 percent THC and typically actually is about 0.15 0.15 percent it's about where the average lies so it's not even getting into a full percentage and i think ruderalis is somewhere around three or four percent thc in the actual and what does that mean when you say a percentage um for recreational or medical use the percentages are a lot higher in that plant right. for and those the, levels when you when you get into talking about recreational use of cannabis those plants that you're using for that, you're, you're cultivating for that purpose of, of smoking or, or getting the THC out of it, they're going to be around, they're going to be higher than 10%. Most of them are up around 20, 25, So there's 30%. a significant it's difference. Very large, large gap. And between. those seeds are bred differently. I mean, there's a distinct genetic difference between the way those plants are cultivated and propagated. All of that is different. Okay. They're harvested yeah. at different times and among other things. Okay, so that's one of the confusions. What would be another? That people are going to hide their their marijuana in a hemp crop, which has been going around since probably the prohibition of hemp, that people are going to hide the devil's weed inside their agriculture crop, and that's that's not the case. Uh, Because of the way they interact with each other, cannabis plant is only going to produce THC up until it starts producing seeds. And the hemp would fertilize it or whatever immediately. And make, immediately, immediately. And, and make it hemp itself, right? right? Well, it's, it's not necessarily going to change the, the entire genetic makeup of the plant in question, but it is going to severely reduce the amount of THC in that plant. Yeah, so the cross-pollination, because the, the pollination happens through wind, if you were to plant a higher THC strain in a field with industrial hemp, low THC, the two would cross-pollinate and it would drastically reduce the potency of the medicinal cannabis. And so no one would it want that. You, yeah, it would it would And in the be same worthless. and in the same light, it's not gonna boost the THC in the hemp. So if anything, hemp is actually the anti-marijuana. If we were really interested in, in eradicating or if the fear that we had hemp crops all or cannabis crops all over Kansas growing wild that we didn't know about. High CBD. That's yeah, we would we would promote growing hemp everywhere possible because anything within 10 miles of the hemp plant stands a chance of getting pollinated by it. Oh, and when so why wouldn't you plant one every 10 miles? Uh-huh. If that's if that's right, really if that the was concern. truly your concern. Right. You could take care of that problem yourself. Overnight. Okay. Now, part of the, uh, I'll, uh, there's a lot a lot of history uh, within the U.S. and, and worldwide, but I, I will just say that legally um, and, and recreation, I, I'm sorry, regarding regulations, uh, it was the 1937 uh, Marijuana Tax Act and the 1970 Controlled Substance Act that essentially outlawed and failed to differentiate the distinction between industrial hemp and higher THC cannabis, which are cousins of the same very, you know, family of, of species. And that 
failed differentiation is why there is a stigma today. Yeah, and that the, they neglected to actually see a difference. Well, it was it was intentional because it was it was these, these laws were developed to uh, exclusively benefit the chemical and the wood paper industries, and, and they know that now with what's been documented with William Randolph Hearst and Harry Anslinger and the yellow journalism. Uh, scare. That's that in the whole. You know that that is that was the movement that kind of solidified the prohibition era that we are now um, moving out of. That we're now trying diligently, but unfortunately, I feel as though maybe we are being failed by powers that be. Well, there's a lot of there's a lot of those powers that be. I mean, I don't want to get into a conspiracy discussion here. Um, but pockets that fill pockets influence. We have we have a, a media outlets in this state right here that any time any mention of cannabis or marijuana come up, automatically they headline something negative. What was the last headline? Uh, right now, patients patients in Kansas are are leaving the state. To gain medical access to cannabis and other parts. How is so? They're 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 the headlines are people are fleeing the state because of lack of marijuana. That does not that hurts all of this as a whole, and especially. Well, it's not even the same topic, so I don't understand how it could possibly hurt it with people that are paying attention and educated. Nobody's paying attention. But you have the herds that only hear one thing. Same plant, same plant. Right, and, and that's what we're trying to disassociate from. Is that it's it, it's not one plant, and the methods alone are drastically is where, yeah, different. Is, is where it begins to branch off and become completely different. And really, that's that's kind of where the whole um, concern from law enforcement, which is understandable, where they 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 just want to enforce the law. They want to make sure that they're Correct. in compliance, and the others are in compliance with the law, which makes total sense their job. However, the, the the agricultural aspect of it, industrial hemp, that's completely separate. That it needs to and is regulated by the agricultural industry. In Kansas, it would be the Department of Agriculture, USDA, like we talked about earlier. The USDA is the agency that allowed states to establish rules and regulation for On cultivating. At the beginning. Yeah, it wasn't the, the FBI. Beginning. It wasn't It wasn't the CIA. It wasn't, it wasn't the government it wasn't, at that level. It wasn't it was law enforcement. States. It, we're talking about agriculture here. So bringing law enforcement into the conversation about hemp is... Almost it's, ridiculous. There's no need for it. it, it there's about, absolutely no need. It's like saying that we're going to talk with the police about harvesting wheat. Well, we're gonna, we, we need the KBI to come in and start enforcing the... Levels. The, the, the moisture levels on of wheat or corn or, or aflatoxins and, and corn. Exactly. No, the Department of Agriculture sets all that up. That's preposterous to think of police going out and forcing a crop. That's exactly what, what they're, they're trying now, to do. Now, one of the and we have talked about this too. One of the, the really big opportunities for law enforcement in this industry, uh, as well as the medical industry, is the whole security of the regulation and the, the helping of the implementation of these rules. Because, yeah, they law enforcement may not be going after people who are who are engaging in uh, nonviolent crimes. They may not be getting those kinds of funds anymore. But they can use those resources for different purposes, such as reconnecting with their communities and building bridges across sectors. Build building bridges of knowledge, okay? Because yeah. that's what really needs to happen here. People are so misinformed that they're actually compare their decision that they're making is not even based on actuality what you're representing, okay? It's not based on the opportunities that hemp provides us. I mean, like he said earlier, the list of things that it can't do is so much shorter than the list of the things it can. I mean, we're talking about lotions, papers, gasoline. I mean, biofuels aren't that far from us right now. And, you know, I I just don't understand why it's... And we can we can purchase a lot of these products. Any product that contains hemp, we can purchase. We can purchase it. We can go to Walmart and purchase. Yeah, that's hemp what you were saying, and that's confusing to me. But explain that to our viewers. You can purchase it, but you cannot. You can't cultivate it. You or know, harvest it. Right. Process. You can't. You can't harvest it. You can't process it. You can actually now buy, and you 
can in the past by hemp as long as you were not using it. <laughs> okay, which okay, so this is confusing to me. Not until 1930 what? 37. Not, not until 1937 this product was deemed the devil's weed, weed and, and restricted from use. Up until then, first of all, the Native Americans used it for everything. True or false? I mean, they yeah, literally. As far as I understand, that that is that is humans. Strange. Humans have humans used this plant since 8,000 BC. Yeah. I mean, it, but it, right here in America, language. yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's always been around, and it was not deemed. I have to think that there was an outside force that was in place to do that. Like, okay, whoever owned the crews that tore down rainforest, or you know, stuff like that, like big oil. Sure. Big pharma, but that's for a different topic. And, but and again, you could, you could, we could speculate on that. There is, there is studies that because it have makes no sense. You would think if you looked, if I gave you the list of all these uses, not not just not just in the marketplace, but what hemp does for your soil, what it does for the, the environment, environment um, all the benefits that it has, and all the negative effects that other crops have, that this is actually. Killing. Yeah, yeah. We have studies. I mean, I mean we, we could got, we could show we you paperwork and paperwork and paperwork. And if you're willing to read it, there's only two reasons that you would disagree with this. And one of them is that you know you have an interest that is directly affected, affected by, this. by this change. Yes. And if that's the case, you're not going to change somebody's mind. But what we're here trying to do is we're we're trying to get this information out. I just had a discussion with the deputy chief here, and he's a I would still say he's probably against, um, but this individual, he comes from an agriculture background. He's, he is intelligent. The questions he asked us were, were very intelligent questions coming from, you know, how deep do the roots go? What's, what's the root system like compared to alfalfa? What's the cost of seed to grow this versus the cost of my alfalfa? So he has questions regarding they were alfalfa. Agri- they were agriculturally based. Because he is also in the agricultural market. He comes from an agriculture background. So he understands how a lot of this works. And now he's also a police officer who is against you know any kind of marijuana as a whole. So we're here talking to him, saying, you know, this is this is in 30 some odd states, this is gonna happen. We want you to know and be able to look at your operation and decide as a farmer if this is gonna benefit your operation. If you are selling alfalfa and producing alfalfa and you have a contract with somebody that buys all your alfalfa at a great price and it's benefiting your operation, why would you stop growing alfalfa and start growing hemp? Right. And he said that's exactly what I have going on. So I can understand why you would... Why, why you, he is concerned about well, the change. Well, no, not necessarily that, why but not why necessarily he's not, yeah. not going to yeah. go grow Because he's already established. Right. That, that's completely understandable. But shouldn't we give that option to everybody to, to decide whether or not... And that's all we want. We just want guys to, to look at their own operations and decide if, if hemp can maybe fit into that. If it can't, I mean, that's just, that's just the way it is. You've got 13 crop circles that are planted irrigated corn. That's the only way you've ever known how to make money. So we, yeah. We'd like to show you maybe something that can alleviate some of that irrigation, you know. Um, put a different, put diversity back into our agriculture market, which is failing. It's drowning. It is, isn't it? We're going to go ahead and touch some more topics when we come back. Uh, We're going to go pay some bills. Real people, real life. We'll be right back.